एवरीवन आई एम करण मशरू वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो सो एज ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अस नो दैट आईसीसी क्रिकेट वर्ल्ड कप 2023 इज गोइंग ऑन सो आई हैव मेड दिस डीएसए क्वेश्चन ऑन द क्रिकेट थीम बेस्ड दैट इज मेक बेस्ट टीम फॉर वर्ल्ड कप 2023 नाउ बिफोर प्रोसीडिंग टू द सॉल्यूशन आई वुड हाईली रिकमेंड ऑल ऑफ यू टू पॉज दिस वीडियो एंड द लिंक टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज गिवन देयर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन गो टू दैट लिंक एंड ट्राई दिस क्वेश्चन बाय योरसेल्फ इट इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ट्राई इट बाय योरसेल्फ इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन और इफ यू वुड लाइक टू सी माय अप्रोच देन कम बैक एंड वॉच दिस वीडियो ऑल्सो इफ यू लाइक दिस क्वेश्चन मेक श्योर यू हिट द लाइक बटन लेट्स कीप अ टारगेट ऑफ वन थाउजेंड लाइक्स फॉर दिस वीडियो नाउ लेट स्टार्ट बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस क्वेश्चन सो लेट स्टार्ट बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग द क्वेश्चन ICC Cricket World Cup 2023 is going on and you need to make your own team. There are a total of n players given. You are also given the average of these n players in the form of an array A. These average values are non negative integer. So what is basically saying is there we need to make our own team out of the n players which are given. Also we are given the average runs scored by each of these players in the form of an array A. Okay? And these are non negative integers means these are integer values greater than equal to 0. These n players are standing in a queue. Now you need to pick some players from the given n players to form your own team. Okay? the rules for selecting players are as follows so uh, uh, let us assume that this n players are standing in a queue from 1 to 3 up till n and we need to pick some players and the rules for picking players are as follows first at every step you select at most one player from the remaining players and who is not selected in previous rounds remember selecting a player does not remove him from the queue okay so what basically is saying that every step we will select at most one player also he should not be selected in previous rounds so we cannot select one player multiple times also when we select one player he will not be removed from the queue it's just that we will not be able to select him again okay how players will be removed from the queue is given in the second step after every step first and last player in the remaining queue are removed so after the ith step where i starts from 1 Ith player and n minus i plus one th player are removed from the queue. We keep repeating this process until the queue becomes empty. Okay, so basically after every step from the remaining players, first and last player will be removed. Okay, so let's say there are n players. So you select any of the player, then first and last, that is first player and eighth player will be removed for from the queue and will not be considered for further rounds. Okay, irrespective of whether you selected that player or not, they will be removed from the queue. Then after the second step, second and seventh player will be removed. After the third step, third and sixth player will be removed. And we keep repeating this process until the queue becomes empty. So at every step, first you select a player uh, from the remaining players and which is not selected before. Now this statement will make more sense. Remember, selecting a player does not remove him from the queue. so players are removed from the queue at every step the first and last players are removed but a selected player does not mean we will remove him from the queue okay uh, and then we keep removing first and last player so array size decreases by 2 at every step also if there is only one player at the end then that player will be removed okay because that's the single player first as well as last and we keep repeating this process until queue becomes empty your task is to select the players for your team in such a way that the sum of average of players of your team is maximum possible so at every step we are selecting some player so we need to select the players in such a way that by the end uh, we, uh, the sum of the average of the players of our team is as maximum as possible okay and the average is given us to us in the form of an array a okay so if we look at the examples let's say there are five players and the average of these players is 15243 then the maximum answer is 11 so what we can do is we can take four in the first step then one and three will go then we can take five in the second step then five and four will go then we can select two in the third step two will go array will become empty so our uh, sum will become 4 plus 5 plus 2 that is 11 and that's the maximum possible average possible okay you can look at this uh, example here we will also look at how the working of it in detail while explaining the concept so in the first move select the player with index 4 that is this average 4 then remove the first and last player okay at every step first and last player will be removed so the array remaining array will be this in the second move select the player with index 1 so index 1 in the uh, remaining array okay this is written for explanation purposes it does not necessarily mean that you should modify the array after every step 
okay it will depend upon your implementation so uh, up from the remaining array you can select the first player whose average is 5 and then first and last player will be removed and two will be left now you can select this single player and that will also be removed and the array will become empty and we will stop the process the total sum of averages 4 plus 5 plus 2 is 11 similarly here 1551 the maximum you will get is 10 you don't need to read input or print anything your task is to complete the function maximum sum which takes integer n and 1d integer array a as parameters and returns the maximum sum of average of players of your team so we need to return the maximum sum of average of the players possible okay the number of players are up to 10 key power 5 and the average runs of each player can go up till 10 key power 9 of course it's practically not possible but this is for question purposes okay now let's look at its solution so if we think about solving this problem then uh, see the, here let us consider these three cases okay these two cases were given in the example so first let's exactly understand what's happening okay so let's say our array is 1 5 2 4 3 what it is said that you can select any player and add it to your team okay and the sum of the average of your players must be maximum so let us assume then that i picked the three okay so i picked the three then after the first step this and this will be removed they will not be under consideration anymore in the second step these are my remaining players okay i know five and four will be removed so let me take five okay now these and these will be removed and will not be considered for uh, further rounds two is the only remaining i take it and uh, now two is the only player it will also be removed and the sum which i get is 10 okay in this way we need to select at every step the first and last player will go away okay but a better approach for this uh, example would be what let us say a is one five two four three then in the first step i have all the five players so let me take the player whose average is 4 okay so i take the player whose average is 4 now this player and this player will go away they will be removed remember 4 will not be removed it cannot be selected for further rounds but it will not be removed every time the first and last player will be removed irrespective of whether they were selected or not okay now uh, the remaining is 5 2 and 4 but 4 cannot be selected again so let me select 5 okay now, so i selected this now 5 and 4 will be removed now only 2 is left so i selected 2 and that will also be removed array will become empty and this will give me 11 this is the maximum possible okay so this is exactly what's happening now so we knew the order of this okay now let's think about it this okay before thinking about that i would like to tell that there are two basic approaches which will come to your mind if you think immediately okay but which are wrong the first is that at every step first and last player will go away so let us take the maximum of first or last player and then remove them and then uh, again the maximum of first and last player and remove them but that will not work why L look at this example 1551 five, okay so if you take the maximum of first and last player that is 1551 thinking that these two are going away and will not be considered for further rounds so maximum of one and one is one okay now these two are removed now you take maximum of five and five that is five so your sum of average of the players is six now this and this will also be removed okay what we did at every step we knew that first and last player will go away so we took maximum of both of them and keep uh, moving forwards but that's not working why because here we got six but a better approach would be we could have taken this 5 in the first step so our answer would be 5 plus now this and this will be removed and i should have taken this 5 in the second step so i would get 10 that's the maximum possible so here the maximum possible is 11 here the maximum possible is 10 so picking the maximum of first and last player at every step will not work first thing second thing is some people might think okay let's pick the highest 10 by 2 players the highest 10 by 2 players who have the highest average okay but that will also not work why look at this example here it is 1 5 2 4 3 the highest 10 by 2 players average is 3 4 and 5 and the sum of this is 12 okay but you cannot consider player with average 3 4 and 5 keeping the conditions given in the question why see we know that after first step 1 and 3 will go away 
so if I want 3, this is my only option to take player with every 3, so I took it, okay. So it is 3 plus. Now after first step, 1 and 3 went away. Now I want 4 and 5, okay. I also know that after second step, 5 and 4 will go away. So I cannot select both of them. I can select at most one player in any step. So let me take 5, okay. But now this and this will go away. So now the only remaining is 2. So I was not able to select 3, 4 and 5. Okay, if I started with 5, let's say 1, 5, 2, 4, 3. Let me start by picking 4, okay. So now this cannot be picked for further rounds and 1 and 3 will go away after the first round because the last two players, the corner two players will go away. Now in further rounds, I will not get 3. Let me take 5, okay, in the next step. Now 5 and 4 will go away and let me take 2. That is 11. That's the maximum possible. But no matter what order I try, keeping the conditions given in the question in mind, I can never pick the players with average values 3, 4 and 5. So taking the highest average n by 2 players will also not work, okay. So we need to think of something better, okay. So what we can do here is, see, we can think of this question in reverse direction. We can think of the last step of picking players first because that would be more efficient for us. Why? That would be better for us. So let us take this example A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7 and A8. Okay. So let us assume there are 8 players and these are the average values. Now in the first step, I have all the 8 players to select from. Okay, then irrespective of which player I select, A1 and A8 will go away. Then in the second step, I will have A2 to A7. This is first step. This is second step. In the third step, I will have A3 to A6. In the fourth step, I will have A4 and A5. And there will be no fifth step. My array will go, be empty. In the first step, I have the complete array. Then A1 and A8 will go. In the next step, I have the array A2 to A7. Then A2 and A7 will go. In the third step, I have A3 to A6. Then A3 and A6 will go. Then I have A4 and A5. Okay. So now, after that, the array will become empty. Right. So let us think of this in reverse direction. In the last step, I will have two players, A4 and A5, from which I have to select. In the second last step, I will have A3, A4, A5 and A6 to select from. In the third last step, I will have A2, A3, A4, A5, A6 and A7 to select from. And in the uh, first step, I will have the complete array. So what is the advantage of this? So in the fourth step, I will have A4 and A5 to select from. I know that. So what I will do, I will put A4 and A5 in a priority queue. I will put A4 and A5 in a priority queue, okay. So let us assume this is our priority queue. I pushed A4 and A5 in it, okay. Now I know that in this fourth step, I can select any of the elements, okay, from this. So what I'll do, priority element, the top element will be of maximum value. So I'll take the top element from the priority queue and it will be the maximum. So let us take, I got A4, okay. A4 what was the top element of the priority queue, it means A4 is greater than A5. So I removed it because once a player is selected, it cannot be considered for further rounds, okay. So if I selected A4 in the fourth round, in the last round, then in the previous rounds, first round and second round and third round, I should have not have considered A4. Are you getting my point? So whenever I select a player, I remove it from the priority queue. Now this was the fourth step. That is the last step. Now let's come to the third step. Okay. We are moving in reverse direction. Fourth step, third step, second step and first step. Okay. Now in the third step, A3, A4, A5 and A6. These four elements were under consideration. I can pick any of them. So what I'll do, I'll push A3 and A6 in my priority queue. So this will be added to my priority queue. Now the top element of this will be selected in the third step because I can select A3, A4, A5 or A6, anything. But A4 was selected in fourth step. So now the remaining in the third step is A3, A5 and A6. And in priority queue, the top element will be of maximum value. Let's say A6 is the top element of the priority queue. So I selected it and I popped it out because I cannot select the same player again. Now in the second step, I had the array from A2 to A7. So I'll add A2 and A7 to my priority queue. Okay. Again, let's say the top element in the priority queue now is A5. So I'll add A5 to my answer and remove it from the priority queue. 
Now in the first step, I had the complete array. So let us add A1 and A8 to the priority queue. So A4, A5, A6 are selected in some rounds. They cannot be selected further. And the top element from this priority queue will be added to my answer. Let us say A1 is the biggest element. So I add it to my answer and remove it from the priority queue. So this would be my answer. Okay. So instead of thinking that this is my first step of complete array of eight elements, then six elements, then four elements, then two elements, we thought it in reverse direction. Okay. So uh, first we thought pick the top element from A4 and A5 and remove it from the priority queue. Then add A3 and A6 to the priority queue because they were eligible in the third step and again select the top element. So in this way we will keep the conditions also in order which were given in the question and we will get the maximum possible answer. Now let's apply this, let's dry run this on these three examples so you will get clear idea. So let's dry run our uh, approach on the first example, okay? So understand one thing, it is 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, okay? So in the first step, I had the whole array. In the second step, I will have these three elements. And in the third step, I will have only this single element. Now we will move in reverse direction, okay? But whenever the number of elements are odd, what we do is, see in the last step, we have only the middle element, okay? So there is no choice between two elements, okay? And the integers are non-negative integers. So what I do when the number of elements is odd, I'll, I'll not add this element to the priority queue because adding it and again removing it does not make sense. So I'll take it in my answer because in the last step, I have only that element, right? Now I'll expand my array and add to my priority queue 5 and 4. Okay, so uh, this was the third step. Okay, now let's come to the second step because we are moving in reverse direction. So I'll take the top element of the priority queue and add it to my answer and remove it. Now I'll add a 1 and 3 to my priority queue. Now the top element is 4, so I'll add it to my answer, remove it from the priority queue and the number of steps are over and the answer is 11. Okay, now let's dry run on this. So it is 1, 5, 5, 1. Okay. So uh, here in the last step, it would be 5 and 5. So I will add 5 and 5 to my priority queue, add the top element of the priority queue to my answer. Both of them are same. One will be taken and removed from the priority queue because the same player cannot be selected again. In the second last step or the first step, uh, the whole array would be under consideration. So I'll add 1, 1 to my priority queue and pop out the top element of the priority queue and add it to my answer. Okay. So my answer will be 10. Now let's dry run on this. So uh, it is 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3. Okay. So this would be the first step. This would be the second step. And this would be the third step. We are moving in reverse direction. So let's put 2, 1 in my priority queue. Pop out the top element and add it to the answer. So 2 will be removed. Okay. This was 2. Now in the second last step, the array was 3, 2, 1, 4. So we'll add 3 and 4 to the priority queue because now we want them to be under consideration. Now pop out the top element and add it to the answer. Okay. So 4 will be removed. Now in the first step, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3 were under consideration. So 1 and 3 will be added to the priority queue and the top element from the priority queue will be removed. And so your answer will become 9. Okay. So this was in reverse direction. Now if you actually understand what happened, so here in the first step I took 2, uh, we were going in reverse direction. In the next step I got 5 and in the third step I got 4, okay? So actually what is happening, in the first step I'll take 4, then 3 and 1 will be removed. In the next step I'll take 5, then 4 and 5 will be removed. In the third step I'll take 2, then 2 will be removed and we will stop. So we'll get 11. Here what's happening, in the first step I took 5. Uh, then 1 and 1 will be removed according to the question. Then uh, suppose I selected this 5, okay, and marked it as true. So in the next step, I'll take the another 5 and then these two will be removed. My array will become empty and some will become 10. Here, this was our implementation, but what's the actual, uh, if we look at according to the question, so we had the whole array under consideration and we took 3. So we took this 3 and added it to our answer. Then this and this elements were removed. Then we took 4 and added it to our answer. Uh, so we took 4 and added it to our answer. Then these and these elements were removed. And then we took 2 and added it to our answer. Then these and these were removed. And the sum maximum we got was 9. Okay. So this is the process. We think of it in reverse direction. At every step, we expand the array by two elements and add those elements to the priority queue and pop out the top element of the priority queue and add it to our answer. Now let's look at its actual implementation. 
So now if we look at the actual implementation, so what I have done, I have taken one long long answer equals to 0, some variables and I have taken one priority queue and if the number of elements is odd, then first of all add the centermost element to our answer. So let us take two examples, this is uh, 7 number of players which are from index 0 to 6 and this is uh, 8 number of players index from 0 to 7. So if the number of players is odd, then add the centermost element to the answer. So n by 2, 7 by 2 is what? 7 by 2 will give us 3. So, this is the centermost element. So, add it to the answer. Okay. So, I have added it to the answer. Now, if n modulo 2 equals to 0. So, if the array is even, then I need to start from the center 2 elements. Then, I will uh, expand the array like this. So, what are the indexes of these two elements? It is i equals to n by 2 plus 1 and j equals to n by 2. What is n? n is 8. This is the case of e1. So, i is equals to n by 2 minus 1 which is nothing but 3 and j is equals to n by 2 which is nothing but 4. So, this is my i and this is my j. Okay. Now, what I will do? Uh, at every step, I will decrease i by 1 and increase j by 1. Okay. Are you getting my point? And if the number of elements is odd, then i equals to n by 2 minus 1 and j equals to n by 2 plus 1. How? So, here n by 2 is 3, n by 2 minus 1 will be what? 7 by 2 minus 1 will be 2. So, this would be my i and j equals to n by 2 plus 1 will be what? 4. So, this would be my j. So, uh, I will take uh, these two elements, then these two elements, then these two elements and so on. Okay. So, I have set i and j. Now, until i is greater than or equal to 0, add, uh, subtract i uh, by 1 at every step and increase j by 1. Add the elements at indexes i and j to the priority queue. So, basically, add these two in the priority queue, then i will come here, then j will come here. Then add these two in the priority queue, i will come here, j will come here. Then add these two in priority queue and so on. Okay. We are expanding the array in reverse direction. So, q dot push a of i and q dot push a of j and answer equal to answer plus q dot top. So, the top element of the priority queue will have the maximum value. So, we will add it to our answer and we will pop it out because we cannot select the same player more than once. We will keep repeating this process until i is greater than or equal to 0. So, when i will be equal to 0, your j will be equal to n minus 1. Okay, so we have considered all the cases and finally, I will return answer. What would be the time complexity? Time complexity would be big O of n log n because there are n elements, the size of the loop is n and uh, pushing an element in the priority queue or popping an element from the priority queue takes log n time. Okay, what would be the auxiliary space? Here the auxiliary space will be the space occupied by the priority queue. So, in the priority queue, let us assume that there are n by 2 elements. So, it would be big O of n, order of n. Okay. So, this would be the time complexity and this would be the auxiliary space. Now, let us submit this code. So, let us submit it. So, we have solved this question successfully. I hope you have understood the solution completely. Thank you.